got to share them. You know, we have other churches in the family. But, amen. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash, look at somebody and say, the rejected ones. The rejected ones. This message is going to bless somebody for real. Amen. Did the document, you should have been able to pull it up. Hey, man. Now, rejection, you know, we're, gonna, we're about to talk about something that could be sensitive to you. Good. You need to be sensitive to this because this is something that is plaguing our people. And when I say our people, I'm talking about the body of Christ. Devil has completely used this to make us not get along with others. It's this spirit that causes us to always have issue with people, always be in the middle of some kind of ruckus, always causing problems, just can't get along, always seeing people a certain way, thinking something, thinking they're thinking something, saying something, saying that they're saying something, just all of the mess and spiritual ratchetness that we go through is rooted in rejection. And this is something I had to deal with within myself for some years. And it was hard. It was painful. But when I had to figure out what was wrong with me, I, I pinpointed it as rejection. And, um, you know, just being a victim of sexual abuse is crazy rejection. Um, you know, and so all the things that we suffer as a people and go through as a people leaves mark scars right, right. definitely leaves a wound and that's what we're going to talk about because it affects our behavior and then i me as a pastor i got to deal with you try to take up for you try to like you try to help you but if you won't deal with your own rejection then you're gonna keep being in situations that are unpleasant and keep causing issues. And this is where the mental illness stems from. You know, when you say mental illness now, it's not necessarily mental retardation or anything like that. A lot of times mental illness is just your emotions being broken, your heart being broken, your mind being broken. Person's mind can be broken and can, they can be very smart. They can be very coherent and very understanding but when it comes to emotional things, their mind is broken and things make them snap and they react to people and their children and all of this different ways, their husbands, their wives, all of these things. These things stem from being rejected. Now, the spirit of rejection was formed in heaven, unfortunately, because Lucifer was rejected. Now, yes, he tried to do something that he shouldn't have tried to do, which is usually how rejection works. Well, in some cases, but Lu Lucifer tried to do something he wasn't called, ordained, or created to do in heaven. God rejected him, right? He got rejected, got kicked down to earth, became the God of this domain or realm. So now it's his job to get you rejected in some kind of way. So he can operate through you for the rest of your life. Yeah, he don't care about you getting saved. <laughs> no. He don't care about you getting saved. Folks tell me, man, the devil just stopping me from going to church. The devil don't stop nobody from going to church. He wants you to go to church, especially if something's wrong with you. He's not scared of you. He's not scared of the church. He wasn't scared of Jesus. He stood right there and tempted the king of all kings. That shows you his boldness. So he's not afraid of you. No, he's not afraid of you getting saved. He's not afraid of you coming to the altar and saying you feel with the Holy Ghost and that with fire and power. He's not scared of your testimony. He's not scared of your spiritual disposition. He's not afraid of any of that if he has rejection in you. Yeah. If he has rejection in you, you the only one think you that spiritual. Because there's dead bodies all around you. 
from whom you've hurt because of your own hurt. Can I keep preaching? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you become a destroyer of people and others and families and friends, loved ones. And you get a reputation of being a certain way because you didn't deal with the wound from rejection. So the devil's job is to get you rejected some kind of way. Growing up in your childhood, you were the black sheep. You were the one they talked about. They made fun of, whatever. Or your daddy left, didn't want to have nothing to do with you. Or your mama didn't pay no attention to you. You got rejected. One of, one of the worst causes, you got in a relationship as a teen. And broke up. Broke your heart. You got rejected. Yeah. Yeah. School got bullied. Rejected. Yeah. Husband left you. Wife left you. Rejected. Yeah. I'm preaching. Amen. So. Abandonment, all of it, been abandoned. Yes. Parents didn't want you. Rejection. And man, this will hinder the rest of your life if you don't deal with it. We're a deal with it church. That's what ABC is, amen? We'll deal with it and ain't none of us thinking we're above it. None of us thinking we're above it. We got guys here, uh, older guys in here. Uh, James, where's James Brown? We, James Brown's in the house. Put your hands together for James Brown. <laughs> James Lomax changed the name of him and his family. Amen. To his father's name, James Brown. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I told him I was going to give him. How long did I say? 48 hours? Okay. I was going to give him 48 hours before I started cracking jokes. But y'all got to know James to know I, I gave him way more than he deserved. But thank God for that because that's a part of rejection. When you don't, you know, when you have to take on a different name or your father wasn't a, a there or however that was. And we've had several brothers had to do that. But that's a part of rejection. Those are things we do to beat rejection. Amen. So they won't just keep, so dead bodies won't keep being all around us. Amen. Amen. And so if you've been there, if you've been through that, if you've been through molestation and, and, and sexual abuse or emotional abuse, physical abuse, anything like that, don't, me don't get medicated. Now in some cases, wait a minute. Ah! me stop <laughs> I'm not saying that everybody don't need medication amen because there's a certain way you got to get off of that stuff okay so don't you come get, don't, 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 we ain't bringing a trash can out here like the old revivals no no that needs to be handled a certain way but I'm saying if you've had rejection you've experienced rejection then you gotta get that healed by God it has to be fixed by God all right long enough intro amen this is this message is dear to my heart because I had to fight through a lot of things because when you're young and God has called you to do something not to say that I was called to be anything big or anything but I was called for a great responsibility Right? Would y'all agree? Okay. So, because I was called for a great responsibility, I was always targeted. Growing up, always targeted. Kids would pick on me at school. When my sister was going to school with me, she was my, what we used to call slack. Tanya could whip everybody at the school when I was little. 
but people would just want to fight me, just see me, just and she just have to take up for me. It was just weird. I was always bullied. I was always the outcast. Always talked about, you know, just all of that. I and I didn't understand until I really got the call, and I wrote it in my book. But until I got the call, I didn't know how God does that. I didn't know that when I was born, the devil knew who I was. And what I had to do. So his job was to keep putting stuff in my way to try to stop me. I believe our whole family probably suffered things just because I was in the house. It's really weird. But thank God, you know, so I had to come out and come through a lot of stuff. Amen. And I still fight stuff. Still got periods where I got to go through a cleansing period and all of that stuff, the stuff I'm preaching, I'm doing. Don't think I'm, I don't think I'm pointing fingers at nobody in here. Amen. 80% of the sermons, I got I, something I had to deal with. Amen. I'm just like y'all. We all the same. We in this journey. So there were just things I had to deal with. So this message is dear to my heart because there are things I had to fight, you know, for years. And it just, you know, I didn't want to be. I wanted God to be able to trust me with what he had for me. So it's just certain things I just had to deal with. Amen. Amen. And certain things you're going to have to deal with, especially if you got children. What do you think? The, how do you think the devil going to get back at you? Who do you think your open wound is going to affect? You hid in the church. Devil ain't fooling with you. He want to get your kids so they can get out there. Amen. All right. The rejected ones. Claps getting light. So, folks, let me move on. Genesis 4 and 3 says, time passed. Cain brought an offering to God from the produce of his farm. Abel also brought an offering. This is a message Bible, so it's very understandable. Abel also brought an offering, but from the firstborn animals of his herd, choice cuts of meat. God liked Abel and his offering, but Cain and his offering didn't get his approval. Cain lost his temper and went into a sulk. Okay? So, this is where rejection comes from the spirit realm, the devil, and gets into mankind. Right here. Rejection. Cain gets rejected. God spoke to Cain and said, why, you, why this tantrum? Tantrum. Why are you sulking? If you do well, won't you be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is lying in wait for you. Ready to what? So basically he's saying, Cain, if you just work on it, If you just work on it and do better, you'll be accepted. And you won't have to feel this way. He said, but if you don't, sin is waiting, ready to pounce. It's out to get you. So you've got to master it. Master it meaning bring it to obedience. Temper it. Pay attention to that area or it's going to lead to your destruction yeah that's what God is saying of course Abel didn't listen I mean Cain didn't listen called his brother over killed his brother he didn't know what killing was he just knew you know if it works on the animals then it ought to work on a human because this is the first murder right so God told him to do what your brother's doing bring the offering of the animal he brought he killed his brother. Yeah, because, I mean, instead of just working on it, he was so worried about how he felt. Now, how can you be so worried about how you felt, feel that you don't care if others die? You don't care if others are hurt. You don't care if others are destroyed because of how you feel.
The spiritual origin of rejection occurred when Cain was rejected by God in the Old Testament. God told Cain, do what your brother is doing to please me. And he took this to mean he wasn't as good or felt less than his brother. And that's how some people think. You're so worried about how you feel that when somebody to tell, tells you to do something that somebody else is doing, instead of you doing that, you get jealous of them. I know I'm preaching. Yeah. You get jealous enough, envy enough envious enough to kill them instead of just doing what they did. Doing better. The spirit of rejection enters in from family, dysfunctional upbringings, traumatic events that happen in our development. That's why the Bible says train up a child in what way? The way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. But if he's trained up in trauma, then he might go a different way. I'm not preaching for hand claps, y'all. This is, this is vital to our survival as a ministry. When we cut ourselves or injure our flesh in the natural realm, it causes a wound, right? Usually, we will immediately tend to the wound to start the healing process so it will not become infected. Infection can start in the neglected wound but eventually spread to affect what? The entire body. So we must tend to wounds, how? Quickly and effectively. So that the whole body is not affected by a wound. Rejection is the wound most of us never addressed. Never tended to it. When we were rejected by our parents, relatives, friends, or the church, we were cut and a wound formed. Most people just move on and try to live without the wound being attended to and healed. So infection does what? It's an open wound. Infection sets in and begins to infect our entire personality and overall mental health and we become the way we are that's just how she is you know how she is you just gotta look the other way you just you know how she is you know how he is man you just gotta you know you just gotta just let that go man don't pay no attention because you know how they how are they infected Change their whole personality. You love them, but you got to back away every now and then because that infection reacts through them. Hard to get close. Hard to love. Hard to, man, really good person, but you know how they are. You know how they, and then you break it down to other things. You know how they are about money now. You know, they're good, but when, when money comes, you know how they are about their kids now. They're good, but man, when it's the kids, you know, you see, all of that's infection. Infected, you got an infected wound. Wound that formed, never really tended to. That's why, you know, at this church, and I thank God, We've done things slowly, but, you know, I know a lot of pastors different things, and I try to tell them all the time, hey, man, just because they joined the church don't mean you need to put them in a position. Because when you put people in position that's infected, now they can hide behind the barrier of spirituality and take out their infection on those that are under them and constantly claim their position of authority so you basically 
put a badge on a robber. I'm, hey. No, I mean, no, I was prepared for this. I was prepared for all these snarls and snivers. I was ready for this. Jack. Yeah. So, people just try to live without attending to the wound. So the infection sets in and begins to infect our entire personality and overall mental health. This leads to personality disorders and illicit lifestyle choices. So all the homosexual lesbian, that's all a person that's living that life, transgender, that's all it is. It's an open wound that got so infected that it infected their entire being until now they don't even know who they once were. Never dealt with. Yeah, that's why you got to pray. Amen. You got to pray for your children. Amen. I've told this story before, but I'm going to tell it again. I feel the Lord want me to. I'll never forget, you know, I was in, we were at our church, and my dad's church was about three hours away, and we, you know, we, um, there was a guy at our church, and he was young, he was gay from, I mean, he might have been born that way, <laughs> for long as I can remember. <laughs> but, you know, he, he was in the youth group and all of that, and you know, and so one day, we were, we were all playing play wrestling, you know. And, you know, I, in his form of wrestling, that wasn't wrestling. He was young. And he jumped on me and was wrestling, but I'm like, I'm thinking in my mind, brother, you enjoying the wrestling too much. No, I'm just being, can I just be real with you? I, so, you know, finally... I guess I won. And uh, <laughs> we're going to go into details. But uh, <laughs> I got a few moves. But um, so then we had gotten an opportunity to work at Six Flags. You know, our youth group used to work at Six Flags. Friend of ours was, was over that bringing churches in, Johnny Casper. Shout out to him if he's watching. But uh, he, but uh, he used to bring churches in, and we would work at Six Flags uh, to raise money for certain things. And so this boy was going to come down with the youth group to work at this function. So he wrote me a letter, and he wrote he wrote me a letter, basically wanting to turn me out. I never read the letter because I got a praying mother. My mother went to that mailbox and like Deion Sanders intercepted. Intercepted. Amen. Could have changed my life forever. And she just, she never let me read it. She just told me what it said. But because she was praying that was a call on my life for something. She intercepted something that could have changed my life. But I thank God that it didn't. Amen. Look at somebody and say, God is always looking out for you. If you let him. If you let him look after you, he will. Amen. And so. A person that is a slave, so illicit lifestyle choices and personal disorders and all of this come from infections that have set into a wound of rejection. A person that is a slave to sinful behaviors, thoughts, and this is the big one, cycles. Cycles is that thing that keeps coming back, keeps coming around. It don't get worse, it don't get better, it stays the same and keeps coming around. That's a cycle. And usually, that cycle is attached to a wound of rejection. And the infection of an unclean spirit begins to develop. So this is how the devil gets access and attaches himself to your personality or your body or your being. 
he goes in that womb, he is the infection. And his job is to change your personality. You know, God showed me this years ago, but, you know, because I get to, when I was traveling, I get to speak to a lot of kids and different things. And I would always wonder, I'd be like, okay, the rejected ones embrace rejection and applaud rejection. That's what hip hop is. Hip hop is a cultural movement based on the rejection of mainstream society. If mainstream society had legalized pipping, then hip hop would have took it out. We don't need that no more because that's good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They only want what's deviant. Yeah. And when kids, even in school, we used to see the goth kids and, you know, they'd walk around in black. And everybody like, they're outcasts. Yeah, but their rejection is leading them to seek rejection. You don't play with rejection because this is the heart of the enemy. This is how he feels. All day, you don't think he's looking back at what he did and wishing he hadn't done it? Could you imagine the torment in his mind knowing that he's, his time is short? So he wants to convince you that reacting or acting out rejection is a good thing or make you feel better. Forget them. Forget what they say. Forget everybody. I'm going to be me. I'm going to do me. I'm going to do, and you're just a, nobody likes you. So now you feel rejected. Why they always messing with me? Why they always, well, look how you act. Why they always after me? Why they always after my kid? Man, wherever we go, they after me, they after my kid. Well, look how you act. You don't even see the rejection that you're portraying. Amen. Makes you hard to love, hard to like. Can I keep going? Amen. First Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion walking about what? Yeah, looking for the rejection. So you got to deal with that wound quick and effectively. Yeah, for you launch your ministry, deal with that rejection. Or you'll use God to feel better about yourself. For you launch your podcast. Amen. Seek God. Fix that rejection. Or you'll use God. You know, the devil's not worrying about you leaving God. He know you're not going to leave, leave. You'll just be his operative while you're still connected. Yeah, I know I'm walking heavy in here now. I know it. Amen. Now, this does not mean everyone that battles rejection is demon possessed. But it does mean that they have a spiritual infection that needs to be treated. Amen. So the devil can come and use it. He may not jump in your body hand to hand and foot to foot and operate through you, but he could still call on you when it's time to call some rucus. He can call on your womb when it's time to stir the pot in the church. Get back at the pastor. Make it hard to progress if you don't deal with the womb. Psalms 103, 2 and 5 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits. What are the benefits? He forgiveth all of your sins, and then he healeth what? All, all our disease. How, well, what is the disease? Ain't that an infection? He heals all your infectious diseases. Then he redeemeth thy life from what? 
So he's going to heal all of your infectious diseases that's messing with your personality and who you are and changing your behavior. He's going to do that. Then he's going to save your life from destruction. Meaning that what you're dealing with, he's going to remove it so you don't destroy yourself. That after he removes it, he's going to crown you with love and kindness and tender mercies. Then he's going to satisfy your mouth with what? Good things now. Then, look at somebody say then. That's the good part. Then he's going to go back through your life and redeem and fix your youthfulness. All that you missed while you were young. All that you endured. While you were young, he's going to renew it. And the best part, he's going to renew it like the eagles. Ha! Huh. Yeah, that's the bird that flies higher than all other birds. Amen. That means he's going to take everything that was on you and put it beneath you this is healing of a wound we cannot act like we are okay when we're not and we definitely look at somebody say definitely not at ABC we definitely cannot hide behind our spirituality and live our lives trying to appear spiritual but continue to wreak havoc on the lives of those around us. Amen. Amen. Psalms 139 and 23 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be what? How many? absolutely any wicked way in me any wound any infection any infection and in every place that it is spread go in and clean it out Lord search me because only you can see it this has changed a lot it has affected me greatly I'm tired of being depressed I'm tired of being down I'm tired of being anxious because of the way people feel about me. And I'm, I'm not talking about folks hating you because you love Jesus. Quit saying that. <laughs> you ain't in the New Testament. No, the folk hate you because of the way you act. Amen. Now, there's some folk that are not going to like you because you stand for Christ, but that ain't most of our problems. Most of our problems stem by how we have treated people and reacted to people because we have an infection. A wound that was never dealt with. Y'all gonna let me preach today? I feel like I have. Amen. You're just trouble wherever you go. The devil always coming after me. I think you're just trouble. Seems like every time, every time it's the same thing everywhere I go. Is it? The same thing. Around the same time every year. Really? The same thing. Around the same time. Always near your seat. I mean you. You're just trouble. Trouble in my way. <laughs> no, you trouble in the way. <laughs> yeah, you're just trouble. Everywhere you go, it's just something. Always something. Man, you just you just make the pastor tired. You do. You make me tired. Somebody to tell me some stuff. Sometimes I'm like, oh, huh? Huh? So tired. <sighs> Trump. People will begin.
begin to wonder how we can be so spiritual. I mean, so spiritual. How you doing, sister? Oh, bless the name of the Lord, e bop bop. So spiritual, but make trouble where? I mean, everywhere. You're everywhere, every church. Every church. Matthew 15 and 8 says, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth. So it's possible to be spiritual or look spiritual or sound spiritual. But the Bible says that their hearts are far from them. So they can be nothing but trouble masquerading as spiritual. Amen? Infections from rejection. These are the infections. Amen. So pay attention. These are the things that come when you don't tend to that wound. Insomnia. Insomnia. Nighttime is a whole different time. You ever had like a cold or Sinus infection, or just something. And you'll be kind of all right during the day. Soon as night comes, it just gets worse. That's because nighttime is just not the right time. <laughs> that, I, hey, you know, God even said, there's a passage in the Bible, I got to find it, but he said, that David said that when he sees darkness, it becomes light because he's, he's light. So at, during the nighttime, man, that's the time. So when you have that wound that's infected, that infection starts, then nighttime is when you're plagued with the thoughts of your behavior or the behavior of others. You're either spending most of the night defending yourself in your mind or you're preparing what you're going to say to them, how you're going to deal with them, or you're thinking about what they did to you and how it made you feel. Or you're thinking about your past trauma that led to the wound in the first place and now you're mad about that again. You're angry all over again. Thought you were past it. That's nighttime. Hard to sleep. Somebody said, well, I don't be thinking about any of that. I'll just be in the bed and I just can't go to sleep. Well, you thought about it so long until your body adjusted and adapted to that part of it as a part of your sleep pattern. We get to bed, you can't go to sleep. It's normal after such a long period of time. Can I keep preaching in here? I'll help somebody if, they, if they'll let me. But insomnia. Plagued by chronic health issues. Now, I know some folk believe that anytime somebody's sick, it's the devil, or you know, they, they got an emotional disorder or something like that. Your pastor don't believe that. I believe some folk can be sick because they're sick. Amen. Amen. Some sicknesses are unexplainable. Some of them are, just need faith to heal. Some of them is a test. Some of them could just be the way you did your body. Amen. If you eat a bag of Funyuns every night, you're going to have health issues and chronic breath. <laughs> a Funyun is fake onion. They put them two words together and came up with Funyun. Ain't nothing fun about a Funyun. You don't even know what it is. You don't know what that is. But Chronic health issues can come from open wounds that were never healed. Amen. Yeah, that can come from, and then sometimes the way you do eat, sleep, and different things based on what you went through can lead to a chronic illness. Amen. Sometimes some folks can be sick, and just like the disciples said, Jesus, why, why are they blind? Who sinned, the mama or the daddy? He said, nobody sinned. Said so that Jesus could be glorified. He healed her. That was a, that was for a miracle purpose. 
Amen. So I know, you know, I know y'all be reading folk books and stuff, but man, you got to realize sometimes folk write books to write another book. Can I keep preaching? Amen. But anyway, I said all that to say chronic health issues can come when you don't deal with certain wounds. Infections can manifest as health issues. Trouble always finds you. Always. That's an infection. Trouble is not supposed to always find with you. Find you. Amen. Quit singing, I had some weary days. That's the most depressing song ever. And sleepless nights. But when I look around and I think things over, all of my good, man, I, you know, I hate that song. I hate that song and I hate Precious Lord. Precious Lord make me want to jump out of a moving vehicle. That is so depressing. Precious Lord, take my hand. It's so depressing. It's just the, it's the frequencies and the tone. I don't want to hear that. Who sung that? Mahalia Jackson? Oh, that's a whole other. Yeah, let me move on. Trouble, but trouble always finds you. And them the kind of songs you got in your playlist. You have a playlist set up for trouble. <laughs> trouble, uh oh, let me go to the list. <laughs> Guide me, oh ye great Jehovah. Beg me through the. You might as well just get a plow, some oxen, and just get out in the field. I mean, You know what I'm talking about, Reggie? We used to have to play them songs for a living. <laughs> but trouble always finds you. You need to, trouble needs to stop finding you. Amen. You know, if something has to find you, that means you hiding from it. Why are you hiding from trouble? You can't live your life always. But if you don't deal with rejection and you hate certain people. Now, we say we're supposed to be believers. There should be nobody on a hate list. And quit trying to cute it up. Well, I just rather not be around. You know, just. You hate them. And it's because of your wound. And hate is an infection. Your children can't get along with people because that's, who it's gonna, that, that's what's going to happen. It's going to be your kids. Always the kids. They're going to mirror this behavior. They're going to tap into your wound and they're going to stay in it with folks. Amen. <laughs> Baby said amen. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Baby said I ain't that young. Depression, anxiety. Man, folks go to get medication for this, and man, you got a wound. You went through something so traumatic, you can't just play like that didn't happen to you. Amen. We can't just lock Uncle. I can't always know his name, but you know, Uncle Sidney. He the one in the room. They got to feed him under the dough. <laughs> you open the dough, he going to chase everybody. <laughs> he chased it because you had him in the room. He need the stretches. This is such a serious topic. I can't be laughing like this. 
but that's a real person. That's why we laugh. I, I'm going to have to take that out, Lord. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right. But <laughs> you can't lock them in a room and play like they're okay. <laughs> you can't play like they're okay when they're not. Amen. That's a wound. Something happened to them. And the older you get with that, the more the infection spreads. Then once it's covered you, it gets on your spouse. Then your children. Then you got a whole new generation of it. Paranoia. This is a big one. You don't think you paranoid, but when you think people are talking about you, you think people are after you, you think people are always trying to attack you, attack your husband, your wife, your children, always after you, that's paranoia. Paranoia. You are not that important. Amen. Ain't nobody targeting you. I get it all day. I get emails. They call the office. Her voice is behind me, running after me. Oh, they using the towers and they flashing stuff. And I see people and they all in my email. They all in it. People have, you know, they had a wound and they let it go too long. And now they are fully paranoid, like, you know, need real help. They come up here. Folks, fly. Catch planes, buses. Come up here. Knock on the door. Want to talk to me. Because every I saw your video and it's all true because the government is after me. I'm like, if they ain't after me, why they after you? You saw my video. <laughs> and I be trying to feel sorry for him. Landing me like, daddy, don't go out there. Don't go out there, daddy. Don't go. No. He done went. Now I be out there. I be like, hey. I was like, and he'd be right every time. I, after it's over, I always say, man, I wish I hadn't went out there. <laughs> I'm just trying to be nice. But man, people, they get to this level of paranoia, but it starts out in here. In a church setting, you think folks against you. Talking about you. You hear it. And all it takes is the devil to send that person that goes to church just to attach to that situation. To come to you and tell you, nah, you know, I, I, I don't want to say it. <laughs> you, I, I, you know, but somebody, you know, they, I, you know, they did say, I heard them, you know, your, your name came up. And <laughs> yeah, that's why they woke up this morning. That's their job. That's the only reason they had ABC. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Can't stop that. As long as the door is on the building, that's coming. We just pray for them. Paranoia is a real thing. Constant fallouts with others. Man, you are allowed one fallout every 10 years. That, I mean, that's about normal. And it ain't even a fallout fallout, just a good disagreement. Every 10, 15 years. But every year... In the church, in your family, every job, every relationship has a wound and it's festering. Can I keep preaching? <laughs> Fault finding, slander in a busybody, that's a wound. It's a wound in you looking for wounds in others so you can talk about them to deflect your mind from you. You feel better about yourself when you take others down. Now, he think he perfect. He think he, she thinks she better. She think her kids are better. She think this and that. You're just looking for something. Yeah, it's a fault finder, slanderer. 
or a busybody. Just talking folks' business to feel better about your whack business. Amen. That's all it is. Amen. Self-mutilation. Number one, probably, well, two or three up there. This is a big sign of rejection. If you've ever dealt with any of this, you need to address this. Cutting yourself. Tattoos. Piercings. That's rejection. I'm not talking about getting your ears pierced like, you know, like we do. I'm talking about piercing your tongue. Your piercing your back. Like Miguel, he pierced his back with big hooks. Yeah, all of that. Tattoos. If you got tattoos on you, you got wounds. That was the, tattoo is an infection. And, and you know, the thing about tattoos, it's actually a Affection, an infection in the natural too. Cannot let go of what others did to you. If you can't let go of what others did to you, your life is at a halt. You can't move forward. Many of you are single and can't ever get married because you can't let go of what others did to you. Many of you can't stay married because you can't let go. You can't stay at a church long because you can't let go. You can't stay at a job long because you can't let go. You can't stay before the Lord and have a good prayer life. It starts and then it stops because you can't let go. Yeah, the devil knew your potential. He knew what you would become. He knew what God had destined for you. He knew it. So he put somebody in your life to do something to you so that you would focus on that and it will stop your progress for the rest of your life. Whatever they did, you can't move past it. That's an infection. And that's an entire being. Your whole body is affected by that infection. Substance. That's what substances are. Folk don't smoke because smoke tastes good. I don't care if it's swishes sweet or black and mild cherry, black and mild lemonade. You got to... I don't care. Smoke don't taste good. It's smoke. It's smoke. Smoke is the opposite of oxygen. <laughs> it is. It's the opposite of oxygen. It, it, but people smoke because there's a wound. If you smoke, it's because of an infection. That's what it is. Because smoking is just like a way to distract you from dealing with what you need to deal with. That's what the black and mild is. Don't nobody want their lips black. But you risk it instead of dealing with yourself. Swish is sweet. That, that's an old stinky incense. Why you want that? Why you want cherry smoke? You just need smoke. Because it's going to calm you down. Nicotine, calm me down. Because there's a wound that I don't want to deal with. Whiskey. Alcohol. Substance. Substance abuser. Take your mind off of that wound, that infection. I know I'm preaching in here. Amen. Now listen. Oh, we're going to give you the solution, but you know, I'm preaching this stuff because I want to help you. Like, I'm, I, I want to help you. I've dealt with some of the stuff on this list. It's in my life for real. It was. And I had to address the rejection in order to handle it. And I ain't done. I got to keep addressing the rejection.
Sexual deviance. Folk ain't just deciding to listen to Megan the Stallion. Folks listening to that because there's a wound in them that registers with that. She's an infection. She's definitely infected. Her music is infected. And it's an infection. And that's why you keep slipping and listening to it. You would think if you went to the Truth Behind Hip Hop Church that it would be easy for you to turn secular music off. And you still, still, still can't turn it off. Is it that good? I mean, is it a song that when you hear it, your eyes just go to what? I mean, what? Is the artist that great? Are they that? I mean, so immensely talented that, man, there's no way I can go through life without this song. No, we don't have nothing to do with that. It's a wound. Something you're not dealing with. Man, I done told you the ins and outs and every fact there is concerning what music does to you. How they make it, what they doing. I, amen. Cat Williams didn't know. We've been doing this for a long time. And you still can't turn it off. You feel people are always against you or attacking you. It's a sign of a wound. The woe is me wound. I miss a beta. This is just this lady and she just looks at me. And how does she look at you? I mean, she just looks. Oh, yeah, we hear that. We, we hear it all the time. Yeah. Pastor, you, you didn't shake my hand, and I noticed you shook 4.7 people's hands that were around, and you got to me, and you just pulled back. I saw you pull back, and you did it with some force, like, so I know that there had to be something. So is there something like, do you, you know, I jacked back because my hair was itching. I had to scratch my head. Does your head itch? But you always think people are attacking you or against you. That's a wound. When none of your, when your decisions, just all of them just keep stinking. You need to investigate. Why am I always a victim of bad decisions? I'm going to tell you something. This one too. When I talk to people and deal with people, they always get irate with me and always, and I would just, you know, say, I would just, no, you need to investigate. There's a tone you're speaking with that you're not even aware of. And it's because of the wound that's in you. You say things a certain way and you're not even aware of it. You come across a certain way and you're not even aware of it. Failed courtships, marriages, you better look into that. It's a wound. Inferiority complex. You think people think they're better than you all the time. It's a wound. It's a wound. And the, 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 the sad part about the inferiority complex is you can't get help because you think the people that can help you think they're better than you. Yeah. You can't hear me right now because you think I think because I'm the pastor, I'm better than you. Pessimist, negative, I always see uh, the glass half empty. You just got to stop that. Something can't always be wrong. Change your testimony. Change your words. Say something good sometimes. 
things to say, talk about the goodness of the Lord. If you talk about the Lord, you only have good things to say. Quit talking about yourself. We know everything in your life is mud. Don't talk about yourself. Talk about the Lord. Amen. Devil always uses you to hinder the plans of others. Yeah, you know this if you self-evaluate. God, is there a wound in me blocking other people? Am I upset when others do well? Anthropophobia, which is the fear of people. You just don't like people. You want to be by yourself? You don't, can't, be, can't get close to people? No close friends? Just can't get too close. Because if you get too close to them, they might see the wound. So you have a fear of people. You know, some married people have a fear of people. You in a whole relationship. <laughs> yeah, it's just the fear of people. It's really not the fear of people. It's the fear of you, you fearing to deal with yourself and what people are going to think. And finally, number one, this is really number one. I saved it for last. The number one sign of a wound from rejection is distant from God. You get close and then you're distant. You get close again and then you're distant. And you keep getting distant because God is wanting you to deal with the wound. He even said, man, when you stand before me, just put the gift down and go and make it right and then come back. Yeah. Oh, you stand praying, forgive so that I can hear you. So that starts putting distance because if you're not in it with him to really deal with yourself, God don't care if you're a preacher, pastor, missionary, evangelist, most spiritual person, and you just bat your eyes and folks throw canes in the air and all that. I mean, it, it, that do not impress God. How close to him are you? Does he? Amen. Gifts and callings are without repentance, so you can have the gift. He wants you close. He wants to deal with the wound. You know, if he's saying, hey, come here, you already know. And then you got to back up. No, Lord, I, it's going to hurt too bad. Had it too long. Infection has spread all over me. I've gotten used to being this way. Summary. In order to be free from the spirit of rejection. You must start the healing process. You must deal with the infection and clean the wound. How? Thoroughly. Thoroughly. This is not a one-time thing, but it requires constant maintenance. But look at somebody and say, God is a healer. God is a healer. When we look at rejection as a wound, then the infection will be the spiritual issues that fester in the wound. So because God is a healer and he is the creator of our bodies, he is the answer to heal us, repair us, and clean us up. Jesus was rejected and despised by men. You know, we, we, we hear that in the songs. We hear it on Resurrection Sunday, Jeff, and we don't really even think about what that just said. He was rejected. Jesus was rejected and despised by men so that he could take our rejection to the cross. Because he forgave those that despised him, this gives us our remedy. We must forgive in order to receive his gift of atonement. So we got to do what Jesus did. They rejected him and he forgave them. Amen. So whoever rejected you, wherever the rejection came from, it's got to be forgiven. What was done to us was done to him. And because he overcame it, we can overcome it. We must first be honest and ask ourselves some tough questions. Am I a troublemaker? 
Can you ask yourself that? Am I always defending myself or making excuses for my behavior? Do I blame others for the problems I am causing? Then I'm probably battling rejection. Y'all still with me? Yes, Isaiah says it like this, and this is powerful. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes now listen the remedy it's been remedied he's done it he has created the formula to heal your wound completely <laughs> by becoming the wound for you and taking all affections, sicknesses to the cross. So everything that is wrong with you, he wants. Everything that's wrong with us, he wants because he paid it for you. Amen. Everyone stand to your feet. You got to read these, this scripture to, a total different way because he paid it for you. It's too many people for us to call you for me to call you up. So I'm not going to do it. But I'm going to get out of the way of the screen so we can read these together. This is the prayer. And download the PDF and remember this prayer. And we'll pray it some more third Wednesday, but this is the healing rejection prayer. You can pray it along with me. Lord God, you made me. Though my upbringing may have been less than ideal. And those that were supposed to love me may have harmed me. You made me. You created me and brought me here so you could love me. Even though I may have lacked love or affirmation from my upbringing, you chose me. And you love me. Father God, help me overcome the rejection I experienced and the pain of it. Help me to forgive those that hurt me and the hurt I caused others to experience because of it. Just as I was hurt, I have hurt others. Because I was rejected, I have rejected others. Because the wound of rejection in me got infected, I have contaminated others as well. Heal my broken heart and remove all infections and growths that occurred because of it. Lord, I let go of the hurt and I will remember to forget it when the enemy tries me with it. Created me a clean heart. Oh God, and renew a right spirit in me. Let the fruits of your spirit be active in me from this day forward. In Jesus' name. Everyone bow your heads. And Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message. God, we are trying to walk out a spiritual journey. 
in a wicked time. And Father God, many of us, most of us, all of us have been affected some way by rejection. Whether it was in our families, our homes, our spouses, our jobs, our schools, just whatever. So Father, I pray right now that this message will resonate in the hearts of your people from this day forward so that whenever a battle related to this comes up, they will have the understanding needed to wage war against the devil, against the rejection, so that wounds can be healed. Father God, go back as far as you need to and heal that wound. However it came, whatever was said, whatever was done, whatever happened, so that it won't hinder our progress, it won't hinder our future, it won't hinder our health, it won't hinder our family, it will no longer have power in our lives. God heal, deliver, and set free. And any spirit that has attached itself as an infection, any unclean spirit, any evil spirit, any spirit that has attached itself to anyone, Father God, we come against it right now by the power of the Holy Ghost that they will not be plagued, tormented, have to deal with the devil constantly attacking that area. But God, we surrender it to you so that wound will be completely healed. You died for this. You took this to the cross with you. You provided healing for every one of us. And you did that because you so loved us when they hated us when the world hated us when our own family hated us when our parents didn't love us enough when we weren't getting the love we should have gotten and we start doubting why am I here why, why am I living I don't even want to live anymore I don't want this life Father God you loved us so much that you gave your son for us so let that love heal every wound in Jesus name we pray hallelujah 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 can we do something PJ can you just sing and we just stand here and let's just close our eyes and just let the power of the Holy Ghost just clean us out, minister to us, fix what needs to be fixed. Hallelujah. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken smitten by God and afflicted he was wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him upon him now by his stripes we are healed by his stripes we are healed yes. by his stripes I am healed yes, yes by your stripes Jesus I am healed so we say, bless the Lord, oh my soul, 
Don't forget all his benefits. He forgives all our iniquities. He still heals all our diseases. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Don't forget all his benefits. He forgives all our iniquities. He still heals all our diseases. By your stripes, I am healed. Yeah, lift your hands and say, by your stripes, I am healed. Come on, declare it. Lord, by your stripes, I am healed. It's by your stripes, my broken heart is healed. It's by your stripes, rejection can't stay here. I'm healed. It's by your stripes, I am healed. By your stripes, I am you. It's by your stripes, I am you. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what you went through. I don't know how bad it was. But our Savior went through worse to make provision for you. So just receive what he's done. Hallelujah. I am healed. Don't have to carry it anymore. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Hallelujah. You don't have to carry it more you're healed by the stripes of Jesus his healing power is here right now yes by your stripes my children are healed yeah. by your stripes my brother is healed I believe that by your stripes, my sister, she is healed, Lord. Yeah. By your stripes, I am healed. It is finished, that's what Jesus said on the cross. It is finished, that's what he said on the cross. He finished it, yeah. It is finished, it's finished, it's finished, it is finished. We rest in the finished work of Jesus. We are healed, we are healed. Come on, lift your hands and say it. Yes, by your stripes, I am healed. Yes, by your stripes, I am healed. It's not wishful thinking, it's a fact. Yes, by your stripes, I am healed. Yes, by your stripes, I am healed. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, no matter how bad it was, always remember to forget it. Always remember to forget it. Hallelujah.